Welcome everyone to today's ICCC webinar. Thank you for joining us. We're happy to have Steve Sivitz, mentor and chair community of engagement at SCORE San Diego, with us today for the How Can a Business Mentor Help Me webinar. Steve Sivitz is a mentor in the chair community of engagement at SCORE San Diego, and he has 35 years of experience in high tech industry with a focus on mobile communications and has held senior management roles at large international and domestic corporations down to early stage startups. He's led the definition, development, and launch of 15 advanced mobile communication products, including the world's first, first smartphone. Steve's expertise lies in business development, sales, product management, marketing, P&L strategy. Steve is currently mentoring entrepreneurs and small businesses at SCORE, University of California, San Diego, San Diego State University, Miramar College and the University of San Diego. Before I turn it over to our presenter, a friendly reminder that if our audience has any questions, please use the question box to submit them throughout the session. And we will get to as many as possible during our Q&A session. And with that, I will pass it over to Steve. Well, thank you very much, Indy. And uh, I want to express my appreciation and thank you to you participants taking time out of your day to, to hear this discussion. And I hope that you find it uh, beneficial and meaningful to, to you and really uh, helps you with your own business ideas or current, current business. So the topic of our presentation today is how can a business mentor help me? And I'm doing this, you know, kind of under the, uh, the auspices of SCORE, which I'll talk about you know very shortly but i've got one or two questions poll questions that i'd like to uh to, to ask you and just to kind of get a sense of uh, your experiences you know of working with a mentor and and uh helping support your business so, so Steve, we'll launch that first poll okay of how have you worked with a mentor for your business growth? And we'll give folks a few seconds to answer that. All righty, Steve, it looks like we have 73% of our audience answered yes. Things are actively changing. I apologize, I'm about to close that poll. We have 87% of our folks who voted. So now um, folks who have worked for with a mentor are 62% answered yes and 38% answer, answered no. Great, interesting. Okay, hopefully I can still add you know, some background and uh, interest for those that have worked with a, with, with a mentor. So real quickly, a little bit about SCORE. Uh, SCORE is a, a national nonprofit organization. It's based in Washington, DC. It's got 300 chapters across uh, the country. And the reason I'm presenting this to you is so that you appreciate that there are resources in your own communities, your own areas that can help you with your business or your product idea. And as we'll talk about, that help can be in a variety of ways. So please keep in mind, SCORE is available to you. It's available on, on the web, it's available via phone. So it's a great resource. I'm very proud of my association and involvement you know, with, with SCORE. The SCORE mission you know, is really to help you know, small businesses grow through the education and uh, helping them with particular issues that they might have you know, with their own businesses. Uh, the vision is everyone who is interested in running a business, starting a business, should thrive and have the support necessary for that business. Um, in 2020, which was a very strange and difficult year for all of us, you can see the amount of uh, uh, support hours that score nationally, you know, serve the, the different communities, almost 4 million volunteer hours. Um, you know, there were 140 some odd thousand clients 
Now, it probably is higher than that because these statistics are and analytics are gathered through uh, you know customer re response uh, sessions, but not all mentors are very conscientious about entering their you know customer engagements. So I suspect that this number of uh, number of clients served is uh, underrepresented. Besides the mentoring, SCORE also conducts a wide variety of workshops of various and very broad topics, everything from how to use QuickBooks to how to put video into my online uh, website, how to start a business, uh, what kind of financial model should I be using, uh, how do I negotiate a lease on property, how do I deal with my supply chain. All of the chapters run a series of workshops, and I would encourage you to look at those workshops and see how they might add to helping you do a better job running your uh, your business. So let's get down to it. What is a mentor? And that's kind of a rhetorical question because I would say that all of you have a best friend and a mentor is very much like a best friend in many instances. They are somebody that you can turn to and work with and ask very you know, difficult questions. You can ask their opinion about what you're doing. You can ask them for advice. You can pour out your heart and soul to them. If you're having a bad day, if you're having a great day, you can talk to your mentor. What you want to really do is use the mentor and explore different aspects of your business, whether they are thriving parts of your business or whether they are struggling parts of your business. You'd be surprised at how much value a mentor might be able to help, help you with. And a mentor is really there to encourage you and support you and to help you realize your own particular goals and aspirations. And also keep in mind, the mentoring session is all about you. It's all about your business. It's all about you as a business owner. And it is entirely focused on how the mentor can provide you with help. It is not how you can you know, really interact with, with, with the mentor or feel that the mentor feels good about what they're doing. That's wrong. It's all about you. It's all about your business. So a lot of times people wonder, do I really need a mentor? Or how can a mentor really help me? And this is an interesting statistic from UPS that said that 70% of new business startups survived more than five years when they had an active mentor involved. Okay, that's a significant statistic, five years. The other aspect of mentoring is taking place if you are in an existing business or a corporation or a company, large or small, finding somebody that you can relate to that can help you grow in your role in that organization or in the role that you are expected to perform or to grow out of that role and advance up the organization, more responsibility, more authority, higher pay, broader perspective on, on the business. So CNBC did their research, I believe it was last year, that 91% of corporate workers felt that their job was very satisfying because they had a mentor. So think about a mentor generally helping you in your business career, not only running your business, but if you don't have your own business of actively being involved in helping you grow within the role that you have in a company. So here are some observations. I'm not going to read them. You can see them and they provide some very good perspectives from a wide variety of individuals going back, you know, 
decades or hundreds of years on the value of having that best friend in the business, okay? Having a mentor that you can turn to and ask advice or look for support. So the mentor has always been part of the business environment. Some people are well aware of it because they relate to the individual as a mentor. Others don't realize that they are being mentored or that they have a mentor when they are working very closely with one particular individual throughout their, their career or within a particular business. It's somebody they always turn to. Hey, I've got a problem. I don't understand how to handle this particular transaction. Or somebody's brought back this this item and they don't have the right receipt. What should I do? When you turn to that person, they're helping you resolve a problem. They're helping you think through how do you handle a situation. That's what mentoring is all about. So the value of a mentor is that they are primarily there to help give you a better understanding of the issues you're working with and the possible solutions. And again, this could be problems that you're having, or this could be ideas that you have on how to make your business better, how to expand, okay? You're doing real well, you know, with your landscaping business of taking care of your residential yards, but you want to expand your business. So you're talking to your mentor and your mentor says, well, have, since you're visiting residential homes all the time, what about a pool service in addition to the landscape service? Or the, you're already working with landscaping, what about a tree care service, large trees? So the mentor can help you with ideas on growing your business, okay? The mentor is very beneficial in startups and helping you to understand the, the details of starting your businesses. Okay, I get a lot of clients that come to me, you know, very interested in starting a business. And we, we start talking about what they've done, what their product idea is, what they think they need to do. And one of the first things I ask them, I, you know, I'm out here in California, I said, have you filed a fictitious name registration? And as the expression goes, they're like deer in the headlights. They have no idea what I'm talking about. They didn't realize that they need, it would be beneficial to file a name for their business and register it in the particular municipality that they are in. Or they get to talking about, you know, leasing a business or leasing, leasing an office space, finding, you know, where do they find furniture, where do they get good deals on different materials that they need. And you bring up the question, have you thought about insurance yet? And again, they're, they're, they're stopped in their tracks because it's something they really haven't thought about. As you progress through starting your business, you will run into a lot of different details that a mentor with a very strong background in business can help you identify and also think through how do you go about taking care of those particular activities? One of the ones I really want to highlight on this slide is human resources. And human resources in today's business world, from small businesses to medium businesses, large businesses to corporate businesses, HR considerations have become a minefield. There are all kinds of regulatory rules, um, laws, et cetera, on how you hire people, how you fire people, how you treat people, how you compensate people, how you uh, recognize people's ad ad advances, how you punish people. So even if you're just thinking about a small business, there are HR issues associated with that business. Even if you only have two or three employees, there's a whole discussion, especially out here in California, 
about employees versus contractors. You've all probably aware of the dilemma between you know, Uber and Lyft, where those people who are providing that service have historically been considered contractors, okay? They wanna be considered employees and there have been all kinds of legal issues, court decisions based upon are they contractors are they employees? And if they are employees, here's the whole list of things that the employer is responsible for and how they will interact with those people that are employees in their business. So the point is, is having a mentor can help you look at these different elements of your business, you know, supply chain, HR, insurance, negotiating a, a contract for, for your lease helping you with social media marketing, which is now one of the premier marketing methods, you know, of our society. So a mentor, I believe, is essential for starting a business. A mentor can also help with an established business. And again, I've got customers that have come to me and they've, they, they have different issues about their, their, their business. You know, how can they grow their business? Or they're having problems with an employee, or they're having problems with a supplier, their supply chain. So working with a mentor who has that background of managing a supply chain, uh, managing uh, healthcare uh, plans and services can really alleviate a lot of stress and a lot of issues that an existing business can have. Uh, another one, just as an example, had a, I had a client that was having a cash flow problem, and I brought in a financial you know, uh, expert, subject matter expert, more expert than myself. And we looked at you know their financial books, and we also came to the realization that they are carrying a huge amount of inventory, almost six months supply based upon what their sales activity was. And we questioned that and we worked through it and we got them to realize that they don't need to carry six months worth of inventory. That because they had a very strong supply chain and vendor providers, they could reduce their inventory to about three weeks. This freed up a huge amount of cash. So bringing in a mentor to look at and help you with your existing business can help make you more e effective and benefit you on your day-to-day -day activities. The mentor can also help you think about um, other services that you might wanna use rather than doing everything in-house. Again, an example is some small businesses think that they need to have a, a, an accountant or a bookkeeper as an employee. Well, a mentor can point out the pros and cons of hiring out that bookkeeping or that accounting service to a third party's firm. So again, thinking about bringing a mentor into your business can help make it more efficient, can help you reduce your stress, can point out ways that you can grow your business, increase your market size, or look to other areas that you may want to expand, either another physical location or buy one of your competitors. And how to go about analyzing buying a competitor or doing a joint venture with somebody that may not be a, a competitor, but may be a complement to your business, okay? So think about it. If you've got an established business, finding a mentor to help you understand how are things going currently and where or how can you get to where you want to be in the next six months, one year, two years. So when do you consider working with a mentor? 
and my standard response is at any time. There is no bad time of considering to start working with a mentor. And it's never too late because when you bring a mentor in, the mentor can help you with some immediate solutions to issues that you're having, generate other ideas about how to, how to approach your market or your customer base. And that is kind of helps you rejuvenate your business. It gets you a, a restart of where you're at because you brought some other energy in. You've brought somebody in, another pair of eyes, another mind to think about your, your, your business. So at any part of your, your business activity, it's always the right time to bring a mentor in. And as I said, even if you have a successful business, a mentor can help you, may be able to help you improve the business or expand the business or give yourself more time off or pay yourself more. It's another individual that can help you think through taking advantage of your business and providing the best solution for your, for your customers. <clears throat> Excuse me. So how do you find a, a, a mentor? And this is a little bit of a tricky question, but it's really quite simple. Um, you just ask people that you're familiar with that might be in the same business, that might be friends of yours, and just casually you know, start a conversation as, hey, <clears throat> you're really looking for some outside you know, help or another pair of eyes to look at your business, or I've got this particular problem. Can they suggest somebody? Okay. Uh, also networking. You know, if you belong to an, you know, an organization, you know, the Rotary Clubs, the, the, the Elks Club, you know, the Bridge Club, you know, talk to them. See if they might know of somebody who is either constantly involved mentoring businesses or might be interested because you've got a unique business. <clears throat> you're running a, 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 an agricultural business, you're growing vegetables, and you're looking for a mentor, and they might say, hey, <clears throat> I've got a friend that loves growing vegetables. While they not, might not be a professional in the, the field, they have experience in the same field. It'd be a good opportunity for you to exchange ideas with them. What kind of fertilizer, how much water, you know, can you go to a, uh, uh, a crop rotation system and reduce the amount of fertilizer, reduce the, the, the pesticides that you use? They may already have done that or thought about it or know somebody else. So think about tapping into your own close network of, of people, friends and family uh, in, in your business community. If you're working in an organization, um, See who you admire or you feel you like working with and feel comfortable sitting down in a meeting next to, as opposed to the other end of the table. That could be a person that you want to spend more time with talking about how things are going for you within that company. And you might want to, you know, approach it very point blank and said, hey, I've got this, this issue. Can we spend 10, 15 minutes talking about it? I'd appreciate your advice. There's nothing wrong with that. And most of the time you will find people are very receptive when you come out and say, hey, I value your opinion. I'd like you to help me on this one item. And from there it can grow. So <clears throat> a mentor is somebody that can really help you throughout your career, push things forward in, in, in your business. Always find people are reluctant to work with a mentor because they're not sure how they, they, they should prepare for it. And again, <clears throat> let me use some personal examples. At SCORE, and this is just an example, not hyping SCORE, we have a client intake process. And the majority of times people 
go to our website, they request a mentor, and they fill out a very short questionnaire. Do you have a business? What is the, the, the business all about? Or what are you trying to do? What kind of problems would you like help with? And they submit that. And then we go through a process of finding the appropriate mentor for that you know, particular client. What often happens is that the mentor at the first meeting will really help the client figure out the areas that they really need help in, regardless of what they may have put down on the questionnaire. Because the mentor is there to help you think about your business. How do you run your business? How do you interact with your customers? How advanced and market innovative is your product offering? And all of a sudden, the dialogue gets going and the mentor can help you think about areas that you want to, to address. It's often beneficial to have some sort of outline or overview of what is your business plan? Who are you selling to? Are you selling to young adults? Are you selling to families with young children? Are you selling to you know, senior adults? Okay. And is yours a, a service? You know, a tax service or a yoga service, or is it an actual product? You know, a bakery. Okay. And establish that overview and explain to the mentor what your business is. How do you conduct your business? How often are you open? How do you market? How do you make people aware of who you are, where you are? And a very important point that most businesses overlook is customer support. And this is an element of small businesses that is very frequently ignored. And think about it. I would say everyone in this room at some time has bought a product, taken it home, used it for X number of days or weeks, and then had a question about the product, either how to use it, or was it working, or could it do something? So they wanted to talk to the provider of that product. They wanted customer service, they wanted customer support. So pointing that out to a business owner, a mentor pointing that out, can help that business owner retain their customer, also keep the customers satisfied, and thirdly, avoid a headache. There is nothing worse, and we have all had the experience of trying to get customer support, and there's nobody to talk to, or you can't get your question resolved. It costs five to seven times more to acquire a new customer than it does to retain a current customer. Therefore, customer service pays for itself. And the reason I'm harping on, on this, this customer service is just one example of a mentor coming into a business, understanding how the business operates, what the business plan is, and saying, oh, you've got a hole in your business plan. You don't have a strong customer service approach. Okay. Getting the value out of your, your relationship. And again, this is very simple yet critical to, to understand. The mentor-mentee relationship is based upon a free exchange of ideas, positions, suggestions. Okay. Some of them may run contrary to what you're thinking. Some of them may be very supportive. Even if the input is not exactly what you're hoping for, then maybe ask the question of why did you present me that approach? Okay, have this exchange of ideas and don't be afraid to challenge the mentor 
with why are they suggesting that? Why will this help me? Or how will this help me? Okay. Also, you want to feel as you're looking at the mentor mentee relationship that it is helping your business. And it is also helping you. As I said, it's, it's easy to see if it's helping your business. Are the ideas that the mentor is providing helping the business grow? Okay. Having less customer service calls or fewer customer service calls. Uh, having a broader audience, you know, walk through the door or hit the buy button. Okay. That's easy to measure. Also, is the environment of your office or your business or yourself, is that improving? Is it happier? Okay. Are you less stressed? Do you feel more comfortable, you know, talking to customers or talking to a, a, a problem customer or talking to a problem vendor? Okay. There, a mentor, again, can help you on how do you position yourself with, with your vendor. You've got the money, they've got the goods. There should be a comfortable exchange between you. Okay. Another thing to think about in the relationship, if you're using a third party mentor rather than somebody in your, in your, in your business, is are the times that you're getting together suitable to you? And again, it's about you. It's not about meeting the men, mentor's schedule. Okay. It's about meeting your schedule. So can you meet when you need the, the mentor to, to be available? And I'm not saying on a moment's call, but if you say, I'd like to talk to you in the next two or three days, you know, is the mentor going to be available? They should be, rather than saying, well, let me get back to you on that, okay? They should have a comfort level that they will be by your side as you need them. So you really wanna have this, this free exchange of ideas. And again, sometimes it can be push-pull. And you shouldn't be afraid of that. And if you don't like what you're hearing, don't get to be condescending about it. There's nothing wrong with going back to the mentor and saying, geez, I don't understand why you took that position or why you found a problem with my approach. Can you please explain or help me understand that better? When should a mentor mentee relationship end? Okay, this is a very simple one. Whenever you, the business owner, wants it to end. Okay, again, it's about your business. It's not about the mentor. I have a very strong personal feeling about this. And I say to a lot of my clients that if they don't feel that the interaction and the exchange of ideas or the general environment is comfortable for them, then find a different mentor. Say goodbye to me and don't feel bad about it because it's not about the mentor, whether it's me or any other mentor. It's about you, it's about your business. And is the mentor helping you with your business? Are they helping you allay your concerns? Are they giving you suitable information so that you can make the right, uh, you know, right choices. Okay, so if you're finding that there is a personality conflict between you and the and and and, and the mentor, um, if you're you're finding that again the times don't fit you, or if the mentor really doesn't understand your business, you know. You really want somebody that's been in the food service business rather than a guy who's been in wireless communications all his career, that's fine. Say, Steve, thank you very much for the help, but I wanna find somebody that's more understanding and has a stronger background in my business. End of discussion, don't feel bad about it, okay? It's about you. Again, <clears throat> Why would you want to work with with a, with a mentor? And as I like to say about my my fellow colleagues, you know, we've been there, we've done that. 
Okay, we've walked the talk. Okay, we've we've dealt with problems of landlords who won't fix the air conditioner in the middle of August. Okay, we've dealt with supply chains that can't get us the cups for our um, slushy business until next week. Okay, we know how to handle those situations. Um, you've got a, a, an issue with a you know financial consideration with your banker. The banker says, your balance sheets don't make sense to me, or you don't have a cash flow model, I understand. Work with your mentor. They've done that. They've been through that. The, the, again, the, the mentor is impartial. They want to be supportive, but they also are expected to be a little bit of a devil's advocate because it's important that the mentor gets you to think about your business. The mentor does not give you all of the solutions, does not answer all the questions. A good mentor helps you think about your issue and says, here are several different approaches you should consider on helping you to come to a decision about that particular issue. Because if the mentor says, fire that vendor, and you fire the vendor, and the next vendor, you know, or it takes you, you know, six weeks to find a new vendor, and that vendor turns out to be worse, okay? That was the mentor's decision to fire the vendor. That wasn't yours, okay? But you accepted it. So you've got to live with the results. So the mentor is there to help you think through things, give you ideas to stimulate your, your, your business, give you ideas on how to work with customers, how to improve your marketing, uh, different approaches to your, your, your product offering. One of the things a lot of businesses don't spend enough time on is what I will call the product roadmap, okay? You've got a product today that's selling very well. How long is it gonna to continue to sell very well? What's the next generation? Where do you go to after your product sales start to slow down because your competition has eclipsed you? You need to have a product roadmap. That's something a mentor can help you think about. How do you define a product roadmap? How do you put that in play while you're still selling your existing product. So again, the mentor-mentee relationship is an exchange of ideas, approaches, questions and answers. And also, don't be afraid to challenge the mentor to explain themselves so that they can give you a better understanding that you understand why they're making that recommendation and does it suit you. So with that, that's a snapshot of you know how a business mentor could can help your business or help you in your career activity. So I want to turn it over to, to you, the audience, um, you know, for any questions or, or comments that, that that you might have. I appreciate spending the time with you. I hope you found even a, a couple of points that I made beneficial to you and also think about you know, how a mentor could eventually help you with your, your own business activities. So with that, are there any questions that I can help you with or any comments that you'd like to provide about my point or my approach? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, we do have a few questions, but as a reminder to the audience, if you have any questions, please use a question box to submit them, submit your questions, and we'll get to as many as possible. But the first question we received is, how often should I meet with my mentor, Steve? Good question. Easy one to answer. 
how often do you want to meet with your, your mentor? So it somewhat depends upon what issue are you trying to resolve, okay? If it's an issue, let's say, if it's a problem, let's take that as one scenario. And do you have a deadline for resolving that, that issue? Let's say you've got to respond to a change of your building lease and you've only got 14 days. You may decide that you want to meet with your, your mentor you know, every couple of days after you've reviewed things, uh, after you've talked to the, to the landlord. Um, so it really is very dependent upon you and what the issue is that you're asking for advice upon. And um, historically, I have found that the more frequently I talk with a client, the more areas I'm able to help with or understand. So one thing is that if they only come in once a month or once every two months, the expectation of them being able to provide a lot of valuable guidance is going to be reduced or should be reduced because a lot happens over that that period of time hopefully this gives you a sense of uh, what, what you're looking for but thank you for the question beautiful and i just received a quick comment um one of our participants from san diego uh, said that they have always enjoyed working with score mentors that they're a great resource um but moving on to our next question uh, I know you answered this a little bit, but this person ha would like a little bit more insight. Um, this question is, does my mentor need to be in my industry? Excellent question. And again, that could be answered in a couple of ways. One is, if you have a specific problem that you're trying to resolve, okay? Let's say you're trying to import food from Asia. The mentor should have a background to understand importing food from Asia. What are the regulatory requirements? What are the uh, border patrol requirements? What are the export import guidelines? Okay. If you're generally trying to answer a question of you know, how should I market my food importation business online? No, the mentor doesn't necessarily have to come from the food business. They should have an appreciation and understanding of online marketing though, okay? Websites, what social platforms should you use? You know, is it, you know, Facebook, if you're, customer base is skewing towards older adults? Is it TikTok if your customer base is skewing towards uh, younger teenagers? Is it Instagram or, or Twitter if you're in the college you know, arena? So in some instances, if you have a specific area that you need help in that is very tied to your industry, and again, I'll, I'll use the restaurant industry. You want somebody to help you with understanding what are the regulations for different types of equipment that you're gonna have in your kitchen. Yeah, you should probably have somebody from the, the restaurant industry to help you understand that, yeah, these, have, these types of uh, pieces of equipment need to be stainless steel. These types of equipment need a safety cutoff switch because you don't want somebody to, to, to lose a finger or something like that. So there, again, if you have a industry specific issue, yes, ideally find somebody from your industry that can help you answer your, your questions or provide guidance. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Our next question asks, how much information about your business should you reveal to a mentor? Is there any information too confidential to share? Wow, that's a tricky question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that's, yeah, that's, that's very interesting. And 
again, I'll just point out SCORE as an organization has a very strong code of ethics that every single mentor must review and uh, attest to every single year. And it covers confidentiality, okay? That's the SCORE organization. If you're just talking to a friend or some mentor that doesn't belong to a partic particular organization, you may want to be careful about what you tell them. And in the you know, interview or discovery process with that mentor, you may want to talk to them about other clients that they have and see if you have any concerns about crossover of your business or your activity with other clients that the mentor has. Now, having said that, if the mentor doesn't have a very high standard of ethics and morality, you probably don't want to use them. But sometimes it's too late. You know, you, you learn that after the, the, the horse has left the barn. Okay. So, I think it's important that you understand what their current business is. And there's nothing wrong with asking them, how do they feel about signing a non-disclosure agreement? Okay. If it gives you comfort to have them sign a non-disclosure agreement, and there's hundreds of them available online, do not pay somebody to write one for you. Okay. Then have them sign a non-disclosure agreement. Or if they say, no, I won't, ask them why. And is that an acceptable reason to you to give you the comfort level that it's worth exposing details about your business? Details which might mean showing them your financials or telling them what's in your secret sauce so that they understand who are your key vendors of ingredients for that secret sauce and what you can do if that supply chain is disrupted. So uh, it, it's a tricky question, but I think it's a very good question. And it's one that you, you should all think about. And if at any time there is a concern on your part that your mentor may not be honoring your confidentiality, then that's a time for you to say, thank you very much. I don't need your services anymore, or I don't feel comfortable working with you any, anymore. And find somebody else. Again, it's about you. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, our next question asks, should my mentor provide financial support? Okay. Um, that's a, another tricky question because <laughs> I know some mentors not associated with, with SCORE, but they, they do mentor. They also are venture capitalists, okay? Or they do, let me, not so elegant of a term. They do lend money to businesses in some fashion, okay? So there again, um, what you want to be sure is that if the mentor does provide financial support, or it doesn't have to be financial support, they could do end up doing your accounting for you, or they could end up cleaning your building for you, okay? If they offer some sort of value back to you, how do you think that's going to influence your decisions on running your business and what does the mentor expect in return so there there's really no hard and fast rule about you know accepting you know compensation you know from from a mentor and as i said that that compensation could be in the way of of funds or services but you want to be sure that it is what you want and it's not going to influence the relationship or which is more important to you, 
you may say, hey, I would love to have you be an investor, but oh, by the way, our relationship is, as mentor-mentee probably should end, and it's probably good for me to find another mentor so that you don't get caught up in your own financial benefit from the business. Hopefully that makes sense. It does. Um, we have a few more questions. The next question asks, how do I go about finding a mentor in this virtual world? Oh. Okay. Score.org. <laughs> and I say that jokingly. I, <clears throat> yes, Score is, is, is one organization. Okay. Uh, again, finding a mentor can be a little bit of a challenge. Okay. Uh, start talking to people that you know that you feel or that you respect that may be in your business or may be in a different business but are doing well or may know somebody that could help you with your business your product idea uh your your issues okay <clears throat> and ask them if they could make an introduction to you that and make it very simple that you simply want to talk to them about one or two things about an idea that you have for your business or for your product and it's actually going to be somewhat of a, an interview process of you feeling one is this a person i can talk to is this a person i feel comfortable around is this a person that feels comfortable around me and is willing to share ideas or to help me and you can also start out slow with just one or two, you know, hey, I'd like to talk to you, uh, you know, about my inventory situation or about how to market, you know, on social media and see what they say, okay? So a lot of it is networking, you know, talking to people that you know who might know somebody, okay? Or if you're in a, a corporation, as I said, and you want to find somebody that can mentor you through your, your career path, uh, just observe people as they work around you, as you sit in meetings with them. Are they somebody that you feel is very knowledgeable and capable? Somebody that you feel comfortable around? Somebody that you feel is willing to share with you and support you? That you can get along with? So it's a little bit of a process, like I said, you know, SCORE is one organization that is established expressly for, you know, mentoring. And there very likely are, are others, but you probably can also find some that are, that are closer to home. Thank you. Thank you. And our next question asks, how is having a mentor different from assembling an advisory board? Is it recommended to do both or one before the other? Okay, that's a very, very good question. <clears throat> An advisory board is like a group of mentors and you should treat them as a group of mentors. They should be, okay? They should be there providing advice, suggestions, helping you think through issues or ideas or suggestion or suggesting options to you so they can be very similar to a mentor a mentor in some instances may be able to relate to you on a more personal level okay as opposed to an advisory board and again i'll give you an example i have um one, one woman uh running a sales organization in a uh, small small company and she really wanted some help on how to handle messaging with some of her staff who were not being efficient or effective in their weekly or quarterly reports so we talked about that but then we also got into talking about what is her management style how does she talk to her employees how does she correct them how does she you know, pat them on the back. And that led to actually talking about 
know, problems that she was having, personal problems, you know, where she, she gets really upset at things. She sometimes loses her temper. So it was a little bit of uh, personality or lifestyle coaching in addition to business coaching. And I felt that as a mentor, I wanted her to help her understand how to calm down first if she's in a bad mood before she attempts to handle a difficult employee situation. An advisory board probably isn't gonna go to that extent of understanding, hey, you've got some stress on you. Let's talk about it. Help you understand or help you relieve your, your, your stress. I don't know if that makes sense to you or if you see the difference, but again, a, a, a mentor can work on a more personal level than an advisory board usually. Thank you. Thank you. And our final question asks, what type of fees or are, is there an average price range that one can expect if there are any associated with having a mentor? Okay. Um, number one, I'll just, again, as an example, there are no fees for a SCORE mentor. And you can come back to them as often and as long as you want. You are not charged at all for the SCORE mentoring services. I cannot speak for other organizations. Okay. I know that there are some, you know, coaching services that do charge a fee, you know, on a monthly basis on a, or on a, a per appointment basis. Um, I don't know the range of those fees. What would be important is if you were talking to somebody who was going to charge a fee, you understand what do you get for that fee, okay? How often can you talk to that person? Would you just get the 50 minutes in the hour and then you're done? And if you wanna to talk to them on the phone or an email, they're gonna charge you for that. I don't know. So paying a fee for, for a mentoring service um, is kind of an individual choice. If you really feel there is the value there to pay somebody to be your mentor, then by all means, give it a consideration. But in most instances, the mentor also feels some value coming back to her or him, that they have given something to you and made things better for you and they find value in that. That should be their real compensation. Hopefully that gives you some, some direction or some you know, general uh, approach. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful, Steve. Thank you so much for answering all these questions so candidly and honestly. Um, I know something that you said in the beginning of the webinar that left, uh, that touched my heart was that your mentor should be a best friend or that a mentor is a best friend. And I feel that you kind of included that in every one of your responses when folks are looking or seeking out mentors that this person should really, you know, have your good intention in mind and should be like a best friend. Yes, but also having said that, and I'm sure we've all been there, I'm sure some of our best friends have called us out at times, okay? so. It's it's not always hugs and kisses. You may occasionally get a slap. <laughs> well, thank you so much again, Steve, for joining us today and for enlightening us with the value of mentorship and how it can impact all of our small business owners for good. Um, as a reminder to the audience who have tuned in today, this webinar was recorded and it will also be available on our website. You'll receive an email to access the recording that includes the presentation slides from today's webinar. You'll receive that tomorrow. ICCC organizes webinars based on participant feedback, so please be sure to take the survey at the end of this session. We hope that you enjoyed the session with Steve Sivitz. Thank you, everyone. Be well and healthy.